Liquitex Resin Sand. Now, you might be wondering why I'm going to be experimenting with this, and I will tell you that. So I've never used this before. Um, Liquitex and Golden have all sorts of really awesome mediums that you can use. And this one um, supposedly dries kind of like grout, and that's what I'm wanting it to do, wanting to do with it. So it has on the preparation and finish bar, it's in the middle. It's paint, so you could add a paint color to it. Um, between fluid and thick, it's pretty thick. Between matte and gloss, it's close. It's about halfway through, but closer to a little closer to the matte. And it is almost all the way opaque, which is good because that's what I want it to do. Now, I'm hoping it will hold some shape when I use it. And this is what I'm going to be practicing on. I opened it and you can see, hopefully it's very pasty. Uh, it's got a sand gritty texture. Hopefully you can see that. I know the camera goes in and out of focus, but until I can uh, get a better camera, we're going to be stuck with this one. So it kind of looks like that. And I'm going to use a palette knife just to scrape a little bit off. It's a kind of like a heavy body paint, but um, very gritty. I'm going to go ahead and, oh yeah, when I feel it, it's uh, very, um, I feel the sand in it. Almost like, almost kind of like a salt scrub, but I don't want this on my fingers because I have no idea how well that's going to come off. Now, over here on my left, I have a sketch of something that I want to turn into a mosaic, and I'll explain more about that later, but basically, um, I was given the opportunity to do a piece for someone else, and I chose this, and I want to turn it into a mosaic. So, my hope is that I can use the resin sand to kind of create, and I'm not sure how well I'll be able to do this with the palette knife, but kind of create lines like that on the painting. So I'm just practicing today. I want to see the easiest way to apply this. I don't want that on there, so I'm just going to scrape that back. You can see maybe there a better idea of what it looks like. And I just want to fill it in. I have purchased um, some cake decorating equipment, the little bags that where you cut off the tip. And I'm hoping I can use that more easily than the palette knife. But the palette knife I'm just using to show you how to get what this basic, basically to demonstrate what it looks like and how it interacts. And I can hear it scraping when I scrape the palette knife. It's very gritty. I can, I can feel the grit and I can hear the grit when I'm putting it down. But as you can see, it's not going to give me a solid wall with the palette knife. So the palette knife is not going to work for what I need it to do. But I'm just going to leave this square and that's the palette knife right there. So now what I'm going to do, and I'm kind of afraid to use one of my brushes because obviously it may ruin it, so we will use this little brush that I got in a, it's a low Cornell number four round. It came in a pack, a value pack I got at Michael's or somewhere, I think. And I'm just going to see what happens when I mess with it like this. See, it's not coming off my brush. This is not going to work either. My other option is a syringe that I got. I'm just kind of getting some off this way. So I got a syringe with one of my prescriptions 
not like an injection syringe, but like a syringe where it has this little thing that goes on top of the cough syrup bottle and you're literally supposed to use the syringe to get the cough syrup out. And then I guess you just, you know, ingest it that way. But anyway, I had an ex, let's just say I had an extra one of those that I'm not going to use. So this is what happened when I use the brush. I have some water over here. I'm just going to put that in there. This is my drawing, like I said, which I actually got um, online at the Library of Congress. And I basically used my LCD monitor and traced it onto a plain computer paper that I taped together into a 12 by 16 size. Um, and what I want to do is something like this on my canvas panel. It's actually watercolor board. I'm not sure if it will matter, but I'm going to use this. And then I want to fill in, and obviously they'll be smaller than this. I want to fill it in with either pouring medium with colors in it. And I got some little squirt bottles like this. That one's dirty, but you can see a little squirt bottle like this where I could just squirt it in there because there'll be smaller portions. Or, I actually think that's open, and I'm not sure how you shut it. It's open. Well, that's great. They gave me, I bought a squirt bottle without a lid for it. Awesome. So, I need to either put the pouring medium in here, which means I need this to not be porous, and I need it to be high enough to where if I squirt a little bit of pouring medium with whatever color I want in there, obviously, it won't overflow. So I'm not sure this is going to be very detailed work that I'm going to do. Or my other option is that I can use a heavy gloss gel and mix paint with that because the paint, I want it to be very shiny and glossy. And I know pouring medium will do that and hopefully the gloss gel will as well. And it can be a little bit transparent because remember I'm going for a mosaic look. And so this will dry to like a cement color. Now I could mix some paint with it. And this is just unbleached titanium from Liquitex. Although I would rather have gray, so I want to see what color that dries to. The um, resin sand. This is liquid again. This is Liquitex resin sand that I'm working with, and I just have some here. I'm not sure how well this is going to mix because it's very gritty, and I'm just going to kind of mix it together like this. And you can see, maybe stucco would work. I'm not sure, but I'm going to be quiet and see if you can hear it scraping. It's like sandpaper. So. And I can't really scrape it over either without it leaving some residue, but maybe a little bit I can. I wonder what we'll do. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to pull it up there. So it has a peak on it. We'll, we'll see how that dries with that peak on it. Here's where I put the paint in with the resin sand. And here's my little shape. Now, I'm going to pause the video and I am going to get the syringe and we will try that because I, I think based on what I'm seeing, the icing bag will probably work the best, but we'll try the syringe. So I will be right back. Okay, I have the... I guess Walgreens syringe they gave me. You can see it's just like the, you know, you would put your medium in there. Oops, there's plastic mail. So I'm going to put my medium in here, a little bit of it, not much. I don't want to get any paint in there like I did with one of my other mediums, so I'm going to wipe it off. And 
I'm just going to put a little bit in. Well, again, getting it in this little tube isn't going to be easy, easy either. But we have some in there. Just a little bit in there. And it does have some tan flakes in it. But we'll start with this. So there's a little bit in there. We'll see how this works. Okay, here we go. I have a feeling cleaning this isn't going to be very easy. Okay, so let's see. I don't want to do anything on my actual tracing or my canvas panel yet. So I'm trying to see how I can get this on there. So we will do it like this. Maybe that'll help. And I am planning on buying more lights too. All right, here we go. So I just want a thin I'll tell you right now, it's very hard to get an even amount. I can't get it narrow enough. Okay, so see, it just comes out in little blobs like that. I think if I work with it some more, I might get used to it. So this is the syringe. This was the palette knife. And I'm looking over here. For this, this is all going to be brush, obviously. And here I can put stones in, but this woodwork is going to be more difficult. So we'll see. Maybe if I use the gloss gel, but even then, instead of the pouring medium to fill it in. So it's going to take some getting used to, but there's the syringe. And we'll go ahead and close it up. It's obviously neater than the palette knife. but I can't control the thickness very well because when I push it down, it, it's, if I squirted it all out at once, that would be one thing, but in this case, it's not working like that. So what I'm going to do now is, because I will want to eventually test, this is the right height, I want to test the pouring medium and the gloss gel. So we'll just kind of pat it down like that. This is going to be kind of like grout, but kind of like letting. The thing is, you can't actually use grout because you're using paint. You know, and when you grout something, you actually lay the tiles down with an, adhe with an adhesive underneath. When it dries, you go over with the grout and fill in all the spots. Well, that's not going to work when we're, work when we're using paint. And I'm just going to add, make this a little bit taller here. Okay, so that's the palette knife. This is the syringe. Now, I bought these in kind of by the card section at Walmart. Disposable decorating bag with attached tip. Even though I looked online how to actually assemble one of these, I saw, I saw the disposable ones. I'm like, oh yeah, that's what I want. Quick and easy. They were like $3, maybe $3.50 for the bag, and there are four. Now, I don't want to put a lot in here because if it doesn't work, then I put my resin sand in there, which it was only $8 on Amazon for this because they don't sell, I don't think they sell it at Michael's. They don't sell a lot of the specialty ones. A local art supply store here in Fort Worth had it for $13 for eight ounces, but it was $8 on Amazon. So while it wasn't expensive, it just wasn't easy to get. It, the first shipment I got actually got lost in the mail or ordered actually got lost in the mail. So, you know, when two days isn't a long time to ship something, but when you're in the middle of a project, it is. So let's open these up. Ouch, there was a staple. Okay. I've never actually used one of these. I've never used one of these decorating bags. And let's see what it says. It says, no mess, no fuss, no need to change tip, just cut for a variety of shapes and sizes. Maybe it will be easier to control the pressure because the syringe worked well, palette knife was okay, syringe was better. Maybe this will be the one we're going to use. Let's see. 
This would be like what y'all would be going through. Now, I did watch a video online, and it basically said you're supposed to roll it down, set it in a cup if you're pouring some really, you know, a whole lot of icing, but I'm not. i am just got a little bit. So I probably don't need all of this. And I'm looking for my scissors. One day I'm going to have to show you guys the work area because it's quite, um, I've got stuff on either side of me. So I'm just going to scrape some into here. And I don't need this whole bag. I already, I mean, I might need it, but I don't want the whole bag. Now you're supposed to leave some air in, but I'm not going to put that much in. So for this demonstration, I'm just going to cut some of it off. Who knows? I like to reuse things, so I might need that in the future. So we'll set that aside. I don't know what I'll do with it. Now I'm going to roll it down. It's so much easier to do. I cut some of it off. I need to find a hole there where I can get the resin sand in, which means I'm turning it inside out because I don't want to use a whole lot right now. There's no hole cut at the bottom yet. And let's put some resin sand in and see if it actually works. So I'm going to take I mean, if it does work, then I can put a piece of tape over the end and use it again tomorrow once I test with the heavy gel and the pouring medium. So I have it in there inside my tip. I'm going to pull it up, try not to get it on my hands. Remember, you haven't cut a hole in the bottom yet. That's important. Now, I need to leave air at the top because these things can bust. So. There's hardly any in there. If, if you see, it's not even filling the blue applicator. And I just need to kind of tie a bag. This is easier said than done, I'll tell you that much. It might have been easier if I hadn't cut so much off. So I would suggest not cutting so much off or leaving room more room for you to pull it through and tie it. Okay. Well. Here we go. I'm going to twist it, and then we're going to try to tie it. If I can, I might not be able to. Okay, almost there. Yay! I see a knot-ish, a knot-ish thing forming, and I hope y'all are, you can see what's going on. Okay, it's sealed. All right. Now, look at the tip. It's very narrow. I don't want a very wide tip. I want a narrow tip. So I'm not going to cut very much off because we'll start out small. So I'm just going to cut. Oops, I didn't cut enough. I just cut a little bitty sliver off. Like this little blue piece here. That itty bitty blue piece. It wasn't enough because I can't even see in there. So we'll try just a little bit more. Hmm. Still nothing. Okay, now there's a hole. So, to compare, that's how much I cut off. Okay, we're going to try this. We'll see. Let's keep our fingers crossed that it works. You can actually push the rest of it down. You're supposed to make it airtight so it doesn't go back out. You, and you want to leave extra room at the end because in one of the videos I did see on YouTube, it popped and it went everywhere. But we're not filling it up that much, so this is very controllable. And I'm going to actually put the lid on my Liquitex resin sand and set that aside. It's sticky. It got on my hand there. It is sticky some. All right, here we go. So let's see. Let's hope this works. Uh-oh. It's not coming out. Okay, let's try that. I pushed it down in there. <laughs> yeah, that's not working real well. It's not coming out very well, and I think that, I mean, that's kind of the thickness I want, but I bet it's not coming out because the grains of sand are kind of large. So I'm just going to cut just a teeny bit more off. And let's see how that works. Oh yeah. 
If I had more in this bag, it would be so much easier to work with. So I'm just squeezing it. It's coming up instead of going out. Okay, this must be like what people deal with when they're at the end of the bag of icing. It does not want to go out. This is not easy to work with. So I'm just going to try pushing the bag in. And squeezing with both hands. Yeah. Not working so well. Okay, so maybe it's going to, okay, here we go. You're going to have to put more in the bag, I'm going to tell you that right now, because probably up, you probably have to fill it up, and if someone has actually decorated a cake and has ever done this, please let me know what I'm doing wrong. Theory, in theory, this would have been a great idea, but there's just not enough in there. Oh, but it's leaking out the side, so we're going to stop that. And since this doesn't seem to be working so well, I'm going to make the tip even larger and see if it comes out more easily now. That's almost the same size as the syringe. And I'm trying to... Oh, yeah, here we go. Oh, there. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. That's why I was having a tr difficulty. The... um particles of sand in here are too large to give you a very narrow line. Now I'm actually pressing quite hard. I'm pushing this down in there and I'm squeezing the side. Oops. And look, I'm making a mess. Kind of like a hot glue gun, but not quite as bad. Okay. So I'm just going to go with that and make a little design in here. I can tell you right now, it's going to be difficult with gloss gel. But yeah, my hand's shaking. That's how hard I'm pressing or squeezing or both, actually. Okay, so I have some sort of weird shape there. And we'll just come over here and continue it. And you can see it's not very high. Now, I've never used it, so I'm not sure if it will shrink or swell or what's going to happen. I'm using acrylic canvas paper on the bottom. But I definitely want enough, and we, I'm not sure what color it's going to be, so I put that color in there. So I'm just going to see... Okay, that didn't work. Obviously, I've never iced a cake before. I'm trying to write my name. <laughs> playing around. We're just playing around to see what it looks like. So, it's probably, if I am have to squeeze this hard, I can tell you right now, I'm just squeezing with like this portion of my fingers. That's not easy to use. So, the whole idea might not work, but... I think it would be better if I put more in the bag. Okay, so we're done with that. And I want to see a color. A, a color I'm actually going to use besides that. Um, unbleached titanium. So this is green gold. And I'll just put some of that there. Just a little bit of green gold. There's a lot of vegetation. There's vegetation up here. There's vegetation back there. Something like a mini caulk gun, you know, is what I'm thinking. So if anyone here has any ideas, I guess I could use hot glue. Now that I said that, I wonder if it comes in colors. I think it does. Okay. So I want to see what that color looks like. And you can also paint over it. So that's gold green. This will give us some perspective. 
we're going to wait, I'm going to wait till tomorrow night and I'm just going to kind of mix it up real well without altering. Kind of looks like baby peas. Baby poo. Not very flattering. I don't want to have a circle. You can hear it scraping. So look, I can get it kind of flat. So we're going to leave that like that and then I just want to take some solid and see what happens when I paint over it. So this is experimenting with resin sand. We're going to let it, um, I don't want any paint in there. I'm just going to let it dry overnight. And you can see my paper isn't buckling too much so I know right now it doesn't have a lot of water in it. So I'm just going to flatten this out because now I'm thinking if this doesn't work then I'm going to have to use something like heavy gel. Uh, that's Heavy Gel Matte by Golden. Those are my other options. Fiber paste that I've used before. And some down, let's see what I have over here. I have Absorbent Ground, but I thought I had some modeling paint. Well, let's try Heavy Gel. Maybe I can't use the grout looking stuff or maybe I can mix it together. So this is just heavy gel and that will definitely do what I need it to do. But I'm very interested to see how um, that's just heavy gel, no pigment or anything in it. This doesn't have grains of sand so it's going to be easier to use. I used that with the pouring medium before and it did seem like this kind of shrunk and lost some volume once it dried. So that's basically all I'm going to do tonight. And you can see I can move it but it still stains the thing below. Okay. All right, that's enough. I'm going to leave it like that for tonight. But I do have heavy gel if I have to use that. I'm pretty sure I'll get that out of here. I need to go soak this in water. And we'll even do, and it's, we'll even do some more because I still have more in there. So we'll see what happens when I really stack it up high. Because I have two weeks to get this done, or three weeks left to get my, um, painting then. So this is the fiber paste with green gold, fiber paste with unbleached titanium, plain fiber paste. Fiber paste I apply with a palette knife. This is fiber paste I apply with a syringe, fiber paste that I applied with the um, cake decorating um, squeeze bag. Uh, this again was the squeeze bag. This is what I kind of did with the palette knife to see if it would dry, what it would look like volume wise, would it retain its shape, would it fall, and then this is just the leftover stuff in the syringe. So I'm going to let this dry. Hopefully it'll be dry in 24 hours and then we will go from there. And it's coming off my fingers, but as you can see, it's almost like glue coming off. It comes off a lot easier than the pouring medium, though, so that's a good thing. All right, so I can't wait to see what happens tomorrow. Okay, it has been 24 hours, and... I tried to zoom in a little bit. I'm not sure. Um, as you can see, it is. here's our card from yesterday. And it's dry. 
if I, it's not scraping off, but hopefully you can hear. It's definitely not smooth. It's very gritty. It did retain its shape fairly well. Hopefully you can see that it is sticking up off the canvas. So we're going to see now if we can fill this in. I have my leftover um, pouring medium mixture that I'm going to use so I don't have to mix any more up. And then I also have uh, Liquitex Gloss Heavy Gel that I'm going to be using. Over here, I'm reusing my little tray. I have titanium white, unbleached titanium, and this, and the, let's say, titanium white by Golden, unbleached titanium is Liquitex, and this is Australian, Australian Sienna by Matisse. And this you basically have to get online, but it's a really awesome color. I love it. So I'm kind of working what colors I would use inside the fireplace and the house is actually stone. I don't know if this is going to work or not, like I said, because it does seem, even though it has some height to it, it has shrunk. So if I can't get it to give me a thin enough line, I'm thinking I might not be able to do this that way, or it may be an abstract. So the first thing we're going to do is take this pouring medium, it has basically would be like the equivalent of a dirty pour, it's got, except it's all mixed together, it's not really even a dirty pour. It's just a bunch of colors mixed together and it's blue uh, in my little Wilton squeeze bottle that I got at Walmart. This one was like 70 cents, so you can throw it away if you need to. So I'm just basically going to take my medium. And I think I'm going to pour it right in here and we'll see how that works. I don't want to have to get it all dirty because I was hoping eventually I could mix colors inside the little square. It's still, it's still, it's self leveling. So I don't know, that actually kind of looks really good. Oh, I don't know what to do now. Um, so hopefully you can see that. I kind of changed the camera angle, but it's basically filling my little space that I made almost. Well, it's not gonna be perfect, but I think that worked. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. I had an idea and I thought, mm, we'll try this. So if I can get the resin sand, okay, here's my resin sand. If I can get my resin sand to look good, then I can pour that in there. I'm so excited. It worked. But you do, you've got to be careful you don't put too much in there because if it overflows, you're in trouble. Can just use my palette knife to kind of move it up. Oh, I'm so excited. It worked. I mean, theoretically, it was going to work anyway, but I wasn't sure. So I'm just going to leave that alone. We'll let that dry and see what it looks like. Now, the other thing that I can try is um, to use the Gloss Heavy Gel by Liquitex. And it should have a high gloss, very shiny finish once it's dry. So the specs on the back, it's to be mixed with paint. It's not a prep and it's not a finish. You can, so you can't varnish with it. You know, you're not gonna gesso with it. You're not gonna prime your canvas with it. Um, it's very thick. This is fluid, this is thick. It's very thick. Between matte and gloss, it's almost all the way to gloss. And between transparent and opaque, it's not completely transparent, but pretty close, okay? So hopefully you can see that. So on my, and I'm just gonna gently move that up there. 
So here's my little palette thing, my little reused piece of styrofoam. I'm going to work with this, and I'm using Gloss Heavy Gel, which I've used other mediums before. It's a little bit more fluid, and I just want to mix a little bit of this in there. If I mix too much, it won't be fluid. We'll see how this goes. I don't want it really bright, okay? This might not be the best way to mix, but it's working because I don't want very much, okay? And we'll take some of that, and even though it's dirty on there, I want to make a different color over here. For that. This is going to be my stonework, and probably I'll use some different colors in it, but this is just kind of what I'm going with right now. I really want it glossy, and I put out too much paint, but, you know. All right, maybe I did. We'll see. All right, so let's start. See, this is not going to be as easy to apply, and it's getting on there. It's just not that easy to apply. Hold on. Um, yes, my, my brush is very dirty, but this is a number two Simply Simmons Bright. I don't want to have, I don't want to work harder, I want to work smarter, so this you'd have to actually scoop in there. Okay, here's my Australian Sienna, and I'm going to add a little white. Guess what? This doesn't work very well because I can't apply it as well. But it will be interesting to see what it looks like when we're done. I'm going to save that. See, I can't. You basically are scooping it in, which means you're not going like this. You don't have good control. because you're trying to scoop it in. But we'll put this down here and we'll actually see how shiny it is once it dries. Because I really wanted something opaque, which means I'm thinking now I'm going to have to use the pouring medium. Okay, so... And this was the syringe, remember? I used a syringe for this portion of my, my example. So various things you could do. You can definitely paint over it and make it look like stone. That really settle nicely. That is what I'm going for over there. But I put, I don't want it to leak out, but I'm going to, and I bought more of these squirt bottles because this is what I was thinking. I need something I can control. And remember, I have come up with this method so I could replicate or do a painting um, in the style of Gaudi, I believe, G-A-U-D-I, and I'm probably saying that totally wrong, so I'm so sorry, uh, but, I mean, he was an architect. It's going to be very difficult to come up with something, so, but at least now I'm pretty sure I figured out how I want to get the painting done, and I found a way to do a mosaic look using resin sand and pouring medium. So hopefully you guys like this. Um, I said earlier in the video I'm working on improving the lights and the camera as the budget allows. Um, if you like this video or you think you might try this or if you have any other suggestions uh, please comment below or um, hit like hit subscribe, and tell your friends. And thanks for watching. Bye, guys.